it's structural deficit um, graph. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that, and in particular the way that the textbook talks about it. In, in the textbook terms, a structural deficit. is the deficit that would exist even at full employment. Even if we had everybody working and the maximum taxes being collected, we would still have a deficit. If that's true, you have a structural deficit. You can't grow big enough to pay that deficit off. In the terms we used in class the other day, we said, here's your growth rate on spending plus transfers. Here's your growth rate on um, taxes. You remember that picture? And this is the size of your GDP with dollars. What's going on down in this range right here? Deficits, because you're spending more than you're collecting in taxes. You see that? But if the economy grows to here, if the economy grows from GDP 1 to GDP 2, what happens? What's going on? What's growing faster as you expand? Taxes. And so your taxes would grow faster, and eventually what happens right at this point? You balance the budget because you grew the economy. And if the economy keeps growing on out here to Q3, then you keep running a surplus. Okay so far? But what's a structural deficit? That's when your tax line never goes above your expenditure lines. I don't care what size your government is or your economy is, you always have a deficit, even in full employment. That's a structural deficit. Okay, so far? Uh, con contrast that with the book's term, and it's absolutely correct, a cyclical deficit. Sorry, when the tax line never goes above the spending line? Then you have a surplus. No, what would you say? That orange oh, thing? Oh, when the, when the tax ever? line never never goes above the spend, expenditures line, oh, okay. you have a perpetual or structural deficit. What keeps it there? That's my question. Government policy. Like tax right. rates compared to government spending. The policy set by our Congress. The ones, not the discretionary, but the ones that matter set in place no matter what's going on. Yeah, and, but even then, if they pass other discretionary measures that become a part of the fixed expenditures for the future, and they forecast and plan and legislate spending without legislating high enough tax rates to collect for that. So, okay. And this is pretty much what we got into uh, following Reagan, or with Reagan. They thought huge tax cuts would stimulate the economy. Why? Why would tax cuts stimulate the economy? Spending. People would spend more money and therefore businesses would create more jobs and produce more goods and everybody would make more money and we'd collect more taxes and we'd collect a bunch of taxes and we'd all live happily ever after. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't happen. I'm going to post an article about a fellow named Sam Brownback. I won't test you on it, certainly not on this exam, but Take a look at it when you see it. It's about the state of Kansas. The article comes from a source called Salon Magazine. Salon is what we would call very, very, very liberal. So the guy that writes the article is really upset and outraged. But he gives you a view at what happened in Kansas with Sam Brownbeck and his idea that we could just cut the hell out of taxes and grow the economy. So please read that when you get a chance. We'll talk about it in class. I'll post that today. What's a cyclical deficit? When the economy is not at full employment but goes into a recession, what happens to the budget? What do you mean down? The budget goes down? Check your terms. You're, you're so close to being exactly right. Taxes are above. Tax, 
Taxes go down, right? Taxes go down. Tax receipts to the government go down. Why? Because people don't have jobs, so they don't pay income taxes. People don't have income, so they don't buy stuff and pay sales tax. In a recession, government receipts go down. Okay? What happens to government expenditures? What did we talk about last class? Automatic stabilizers. What are those? It just says like this happens, causes cuts, automatic cuts on that. But when we go into recession, which automatic stabilizers kick in? Unemployment compensation, welfare payments, more people go on welfare, okay? And so when we go into recession, not only do taxes go down, but transfers and therefore government expenditures goes up. What happens to the deficit? It gets bigger, okay? When we go into a recession, the deficit gets bigger. The amount that's greater than the structural deficit is the cyclical deficit caused by a downturn in the business cycle. That's why we call it cyclical, i.e. recession. How are we doing? Is that fuzzy? Is that clear? Not me. Yeah. yeah, I know I'm fuzzy. Do you understand what I'm saying? You follow me. Suppose the unemployment rate, the, the full employment rate is 5% is unemployment, okay? And suppose we had taxes and, and spending such that we would be running a balanced budget. So at 5%, we're assuming, right? At 5% unemployment, no budget deficit, no surplus. We have a ba balanced budget. Okay so far? But then when we get unemployment that goes up to 8%, the budget goes into deficit. This then is a cyclical deficit caused by the economy going into a dip. Okay? Now if you have, if you don't have a structural deficit, so you have the two black lines here, and you're, you're pretty cool. That doesn't mean you're going to always have a balanced budget because when the economy cycles down, you're going to see yourself with a deficit. And what would Keynes say about that? What would Keynes say about a deficit in a recession? You got to spend and get out of it. It's a natural thing. It's fine. It's good for the economy. And it will help the deficit recover. Back to full employment. What did Keynes say about balanced budgets? We know the classical people said you should always balance your budget. You Keynes do, said you there's only balanced. one time you should balance your budget. When? You had a surplus? Good time, surplus. No. You balance your budget in a surplus, you create inflation. When's the only time, Keynes now, the only time you need to have a balanced budget? At full employment. At full employment. Because this is what we did at the beginning of class yesterday. At less than full employment, in a recession, you need a deficit. And in the classical range, if you have inflation, you need a surplus. Go back to your notes yesterday. Watch the video again. Okay? Keynes said you balance the budget at full employment. That's all. You run a deficit to get out of a recession. You run a surplus to bring down inflation. The classical view was a little different. So much of the classical view is based on a very personal microeconomics point of view. What do you suppose people in the 1800s and early 1900s thought about individuals who spent more money than they made, who went into debt? Did we not go through this before when I talked about one of you fellows trying to date my daughter? 
income. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and what was I going to ask you, among other things? Income. How much money do you make? How much debt do you have? And if you said, well, I'm only $500 in debt, what would I say? I'll fix that and come back. I would say, let me finish reassembling my gun. If you ever step on my property and talk to my daughter again, I'll kill you. Because we do not spend more than we make. That is fiscally irresponsible, and I won't have my daughter dating a young man like that. You got it? And if it's good for people to be fiscally responsible and not spend more than they make, and this is what classical economics continually does, then it must be correct for macro, for government, not to spend more than they make. Do you see a fallacy or an error there? Yeah, it leads you to this balanced budget preoccupation, which is macroeconomically a disaster. Okay, so far? Am I going too fast? Yes, ma'am. That is exactly right. A plus. That's a fallacy of composition. It's true maybe for individuals, but it's not true for all of us at the same time together. Excellent. You made my day. Somebody remembered something I said. Probably go out and get drunk tonight, you know? I got to edit that out of the tape. But... <laughs> and, and do you hear what I just said? I got to edit that out of the tape. Where the hell is the tape? Where'd the tape come from? <laughs> we used to put this on videotape, right? Just shows you how old I am. <laughs> how are we doing? Have you thought about some of these things? Have you reviewed your notes as you look at the